Test. I can hear myself. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not a fan of visual novels. This game helped me learn. But with that being said, I still ended up playing this game four times. <laughs> I think that means something. I just wish they could have delivered on, you know, the other part of the game. Twenty fifth anniversary Digimon Anime Side Project Twenty Nineteen Twenty 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 One Twenty Twenty Two That's four years. Side project for years. What the f we have a game with a ton of text drenched in this, you know, tactical RPG based sauce that single handedly knocked Bruh. out Bandai and the entire Digimon, team, destroying the consistency. Digimon games were on. We were on a three game streak, going on four, with five and six on the horizon. But I gotta say, if you don't think about Digimon Survive as being that serious of a game, in a way, it actually gains some brownie points. When the original developers, Witchcraft, could not deliver a product due to inexperience, Hyde took over, and this game ended up being more of a middle-sized game versus small or larger one. The idea they had was good, right? Bandai was using Survive as a miniature but worthwhile experience to keep fans interested since the quality of Digimon games was about to go up and more time would be needed to develop. Now, some of you may know this, but Cyber Sleuth, Hacker's Memory, Next Order are all native PlayStation Vita games. It's honestly why we're here right now, you know? But this next Digimon story game that's revolving around the Olympus 12 is being built from the ground up on PS4. We've known this since 2018. But let's bring it back, bro. Let's bring it back, right? So it's, it's 2022. Digimon Survive is out. And the question we should be asking is not was it worth the wait right because it was never supposed to be about that what we're worried about is the quality of this double a game unconnected to the circumstances that it went through honestly the fact that they didn't cancel this game is pretty impressive but enough of that right we understand the situation it's been explained so let's go with the game digimon survive is you know all about the stories the name also speaks for itself when it comes to just how dark it gets. There's three types of endings, and those endings are essentially what I'm calling stories, with a fourth true route that's basically what's supposed to happen. You play as Takuma Momozuka and are accompanied by seven other students. This really sounds like the Digimon Adventure anime. I mean, I guess it is the 25th anniversary celebration. Why don't we, uh, why don't we skip all this? Yeah, I like that idea. Let's do that. If you want to know the basic shit, bro, go go use Google. I saw boom. There was controversy around the fact that, you know, Ryo's death was essentially scripted. And no matter what you did, despite what we were told prior to this game releasing, you can't save two characters, right? Ryo and Shuji. Like, I hear what some of y'all are saying. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I'm not sold, bro. I thought about this a lot. I just think the bigger picture here is what they were able to do with the story. At the end of the day, if they really, really, really wanted to let you just kind of go through the true ending on your first run, they could. But with the way that they structured this game, it wouldn't necessarily work. 
When a game allows a player's actions to alter the story, you're gonna need to set up some boundaries. And so in Digimon Survive, when you hit chapter eight, you have to make a decision that's gonna lead you down one of the three endings. The fourth true ending can only happen on at least your second playthrough, and by having Ryo's affinity up to like 30 by chapter three. If you meet those requirements, you'll automatically go down the true ending, and the true ending is also the only path that's scaled as New Game Plus. This style makes it very easy to experience every ending, while offering some minor but sometimes really unique differences in the story based on your actions for example guys on my first run right i was talking to minoru he's my boy we, we both the same age me and takuma takuma minoru you know what i'm saying so he's my boy i'm talking to him. but on the second run i kind of just blitzed through that and you know introductory section next thing i know aoi and minoru are tied up in dokukuman's webs i was like bro how did this happen what wait a second what the f is going on? Bro, it's already different. Yo! Wait, so what did we do? The fact that one, two, three, four of y'all have played through the game more than once and still didn't see this, I love it. I literally love it. It's this balance between, you know, slight story changes based on what you do and don't do, like that scene I just showed. And then there's the parts where whatever you say is gonna increase your moral harmony or wrathful karma, which changes up the dialogue just a little bit, but ultimately leads you to chapter eight, where you have to make a choice. And your next decision is gonna change the way the whole game finishes. I say all this to make a point. You could spend, you know, all the time in the world creating these outcomes, creating these branches in the story, and overall just adding a ton of opportunities for the story to get altered based off what you say. But, but for, for what, man? man? Like, what are we really here for? This isn't my type of genre. There's a lot of f***ing text, and I only bought the game because of the Gulban pre-order, man. I I'm only here because it's Digimon. I came for the story first and foremost. From a replaying standpoint, right, there are some good quality of life features that must be acknowledged, like the skip feature, bro. I love the fact that I don't have to worry about it skipping something that I've never seen, because if I haven't seen it, it'll stop. You could save scum at any time. I know we all did it. Since the game doesn't scale until the true ending, right, you can kind of experience the story a lot smoother in subsequent runs since the battles are really easy. Until end game, you know. Full transparency, though. Despite all that, you know, replaying this shit, bro, <laughs> it gets tedious. Like, yes, the skipping helps. And, you know, yes, my Digimon are overpowered. But, bro, there is a lot of <laughs> freaking text, bro. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. I was reading, bro. I was reading. And that's that's fine. You know, a bunch of text and, and reading is fine. But I'm just, like, seeing the same scenes over and over and over again you know what i'm saying like the same shit with just minimal variation and after a while bro it just gets overwhelming i had to take breaks and play some action games i'm telling you i see the situation as like that one joke let's say right you go and you hit this girl not not like hit like fornicate you know what i'm saying right so you hit the one and then you do that to another girl so the first one gets mad and I don't know, maybe she starts a rumor. She's like, you know, jams, you know, thing down there is, is small. It's not true. Um, and you just like, I still beat them. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I'm calling it tedious. You know, whatever. But guess what? I replayed it four times. You know? Alright, I gotta confess. Might have only played it uh three times. I did moral, and then I did wrathful, and then I did the true. Honestly, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Once you experience, you know, either the wrathful or harmony, you're gonna have a vague idea of how the other one's gonna play out. Obviously not specifics, but you're gonna have a general idea, right? I just watched the harmony and No! Damn, the professor! 
But if we came back to that topic of the story changes, each of the endings have just about the same structure with chapter 11 and 12 always providing the most differences. Some of the routes have a lot of similarities, but no matter what, they always take this natural detour based off the simple fact that you have a differing number and mix of the remaining cast left. And with that being said, the true ending obviously is gonna have the most changes and it is the longest. And remember, this is the ending with Ryo and Shuji who are dead for every other route. I'm out here talking about being dead. <laughs> and we talking about Digimon, boy. Think about it for a second though, bro. Like there's three different endings and these characters are non-existent in any of them. So it's no surprise that whenever they do get added in the true ending, you know, in those missing chapters, they're kind of just squeezed in with like one or two lines. But in my opinion, I don't even think it was that bad, right? I feel like when Rio said something, bro, he said something, you know what I'm saying? And he's the main reason that Shuji is not on the dollar menu. So what more is there to say? But overall, man, I'm a big fan of Digimon Survive's true story. The same way they crafted this unique take on Digimon, you know, the same way Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth did, with the lore and like history to back it up. You know, I feel like Digimon Survive has its own unique take while still feeling like Digimon at the core. I feel like the other endings are more so what ifs, but they still have their own flair. It was fire to see the state of the world in the Wrathful ending. And I think Moro is the only other ending where they name drop Digimon outside of the true end. So it's like they all have their fair share of uniquenesses, you know, and I'm sure we all have our favorites. Harmony was the weakest in my opinion. No, it was kind of crazy when the professor died, but still wasn't that good. From there, I would say Wrathful and then Moro, bro. I don't know, bro. It might be like, my first love type beat like i just did the moral first so i like it but i really do like the moral and then obviously true ending would be my my favorite it was also funny to go through that um the one where you like run away and you stay at home and then the whole the whole world ends that was that was funny to get the most out of this game i was telling everybody to play it as yourself first you know, don't worry about trying to get a certain evolution or trying to get a specific ending. No, say what you want to say by putting yourself in Takuma's shoes. And that's where I feel like the forced deaths don't really become that big of a deal. <laughs> like, let's be honest, guys. Let's be honest with ourselves. We all wanted Shooty to skedaddle. Can't be treating Lopmon like that, bruh. And for me, bruh, I just wanted Rio to stop being a bitch. I, he ain't had to go and die. Rio's death sort of just like happens, like a little bit out of nowhere. Whereas Shuji's death, it just takes a little too long to happen. But I feel like there's a lesson here. <laughs> Let's get a bit more specific though. I think we're warmed up now. I see two themes being explored in Digimon Survive, right? And first is judgment. The whole, you know, don't judge a book by its cover saying. The main cast were all basically fighting their own trauma. And that leads to some friction between them because they're all sort of handling that trauma in their own way. The other is the typical friendship or teamwork, whichever way you want to see it. But the idea of sticking together for the greater good. Honestly, it's a theme that you see in basically every medium of Digimon. Each member of the main cast and Digimon Survive was needed for this to be a truly happy story because they all played a part. So there was another conversation happening in my comment section. And this time it was around the fact that in New Game Plus, Shuji and Ryo's personalities just do a 180. And I hear y'all, bro. I hear y'all. I, I, I agree. And for what it's worth, Ryo's honestly isn't as drastic as Shuji's. Shuji's is definitely a 180. But like, I just think it comes back to what I said earlier. I just think the bigger picture here is what they were able to do with the story. I see Digimon Survive as this opportunity for them to kind of explore those ideas. Things that we've all had in our mind as we watch Digimon Adventure. Because at the end of the day, bro, like, that's a freaking dinosaur, you know what I'm saying? And they're fighting monsters that are trying to take over the world. Kill everybody. How the hell does everybody just kind of come out of this shit unscathed every time, you know? They don't make any sense. Digimon Survive explores that concept to the fullest. Arukenimon, Piedmon, Kenzoku, they was all killing niggas, bruh. This game got really real for real, my boy. And that's what we should be focusing on, guys. Not the fact that Ryo and Shuji's deaths were scripted or forced. No, 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 no. It's the fact that they actually got <laughs> yeeted, bruh. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon could never. What is this? <laughs> This game is about to be fire, bro. Each route essentially kills off a certain amount of characters, and while it's kind of generic, 
honestly, you're more worried about what happens after those characters die, right? That's the more interesting part. But I still can't blame you if you bail after your first or second run, bro. Because the changes, they, there are some changes, but it's not that much and it takes some time for them to even show up. But if you do decide to go through all of the routes, you're going to have a good time, I promise you. And this is a very memorable game, right? We're going to be thinking about this for some time. Like I'm trying to tell you, the, the story, it, it's a solid story all around. And the way we were able to see multiple ways this story could end was also cool and i think it's the visual novel approach that made this possible but as you're probably aware at this point you know that kind of has its pros and cons if you ask me a good story in a video game many times is accompanied by good visuals and so in a visual novel we're kind of missing so for some scenes like the lotmon one you sort of have to use your imagination a bit and for the deaths of the characters in each of the routes we're really just stuck with those 2d sprites but i will say man I will say, despite that side of the picture, the 2D sprites aren't all that bad. Oh my god, bro. I'm trying to tell you some of their faces, like, I... Like, I, you know, I don't know why. I feel like I look at her face right now, and I really feel her emotions. Is that weird? I don't feel like I, that happens in other games. I don't know what it is. I made multiple comments like that throughout my playthrough. We were told that the artist... I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Paid extra attention to the detail of their faces so as to try and show more emotion. And I really think it does add to the storytelling. You know, it sets the mood correctly. It was interesting to see how Digimon were referred to as Kimono Gami in Survive. Whole time though, I was waiting for them to name drop Digimon. I'm like, what is this Kimono Gami bullshit? <laughs> but when you think about it, right, in Cybersuit, they refer to them as like viruses. Viruses, Kimono Gami. Honestly, guys, I'm a tech guy. I like my technology. Whole time I'm playing Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, I'm hyped up, bruh. I'm hyped up. I'm like, this shit is lit. Viruses? Lit. Hackers? Lit. Yes, Versus the Kimonogami, it's supposed to be like, you know, mysterious and shit. But I just wasn't curious. <laughs> I wasn't curious. Like, I was more focused on the overarching story, you know? The true ending was cool. I think the Sovereign Digimon fit a lot. I'm happy to see them, you know, in, you know, wrapped in a story, essentially. So, that was cool. So, boom. Story's good. And now for that other part that I, you know, had unreasonably high expectations for. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just on me. Now, I never anticipated to attack the tactical RPG portion of this game, but here we are. What got me is that, like, after three playthroughs, I'm, like, so fed up <laughs> to the point where I don't even like it. Now, some of y'all might have been to the streams, but whole time, I'm just like, bro, I can't get a read on this combat. I can't tell what's wrong. Now, I could clearly tell you, though, right, that nothing of substance was happening. You know, it was pretty basic outside of the Digimon touch, which they dumbed down please explain to me why these digimon are getting literally one move two if you count the basic attack half the time the signature move doesn't match up with the attack type of the digimon like i i, I don't really get it there is no variety in the battle areas why can i only bring like four five six units in these battles when the max is 10 I was just confused by that. But the worst part, bro, like, it is brain dead. But the fact that any type of strategy is basically just item management. Again, the battles are piss easy until late game. And then we have the Mugen battles, which are separate and are meant to be a challenge. So I'm not really referring to them at all in this video. At the end of the day, it's just the Kenzoku battles that are a challenge. And I'm not saying hard because they're not hard. They literally just give them a bunch of ridiculous resistances and a ton of health. Now the battles are unfair and then they take too long. And then that's when I found myself relying on my items. And I was like, bro, this is crazy. Honestly, I have a decent amount of items and equipment. I took my time, right? Hence the reason why this video took so long. And it took me so long to beat the damn game. And the thing is, bro, I love strategy games. So when I came to this realization, it just hurt, bro. And again, like the battles aren't hard. You know what I'm saying? And item management survive doesn't really happen until true ending. So this isn't the biggest problem. But my issue is the fact that the tactical battles aren't tactical at all. 
or, or it's just predicated on how much I searched around with my phone. And the way we couldn't build our units at all, it's like they didn't want me to be tactical. I'm gonna need more than two slots if you're only gonna give me one move. You know what I'm saying? Again, I have the items. Don't don't play with me, bro. I was playing this game. I was really in it. But it's just the concept that's getting to me. Like, I'm not expecting a store or nothing. It, it, it wouldn't really fit. But there's just nothing to incentivize me to even try to play the game tactical and build up my units or anything like that. And so now the effort to find these items is only fueled by a completionist mindset, which I don't have. Like, okay, full heal is, is broken. One, I don't fucking need it. And two, I don't fucking need it. I don't even know where the hell I got this shit, bro. The combat feels like they tried to make something simple with a small amount of depth, but it ended up being boring and dry. I think it should have just been dumbed down even more, and then they just like focused on the fun aspect. Make it flashy, make it unbalanced, bro, I don't give a shit. <laughs> it just shouldn't take itself too serious if our focus is the story. You literally can't play this game if you're tired at all because it's like there's a wall of text, and then when the battles kick in, that's just the night quill. <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> we not even about to get into the whole recruitment conversation, but that shit was driving me insane. The game basically don't want you to recruit nothing that's not a rookie. And I just, I was so annoyed by that idea as well. And I just like couldn't <laughs> accept that, you know? You can have like max karma stats and a Digimon, a mega Digimon is not passing 50% success rate. It's ridiculous. So really they want you to recruit the rookies and then level them up. Thankfully they hand out them evolution items like candy, you know what I'm saying? You can farm them early game and mid game and late game, honestly. And then they just start, they really start giving them to you, you know, after battles and shit like that. And you know, I just remember the fact that this man, Betamon, bro, can evolve into 90% of the rust. <laughs> Bro, it's like, I was fine with that 100 Digimon number. Like, I ain't really have a problem with it. Until I could get 10 Digimon, and essentially with those 10, they could branch into every single, you know, evolution that's available in the game. There's some outliers like Rosemon, Sakuyamon has this uh, in interesting, you know, you know, um... Tentomon, Boncho Stim, you know, there's some outliers, but for the most part, bro, I swear to God, I'm just throwing out numbers right now, but I might be right. 10, 10, 10 Digimon, they could evolve to everything. You know what I'm saying? It, come on, bro. Like, why stress at all to catch anything when I could just catch the same thing and evolve them into everything? I just feel like when it came to the combat in general, it just was against me. It wasn't really trying to hang out with me. You know, boys, I was struggling to, to pinpoint what the hell was really going on wrong with this survive combat until I played another tactical rpg now listen i was planning on playing something <laughs> more like well-renowned trusted per se but bro i'm telling you i'm on the playstation store this one night and this game just popped out of nowhere i read the description and it i'm it was my calling i'm trying to tell y'all trust me on this one trust me so listen the game is called the dio field chronicles I could type. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. It's a Square Enix game, right? So it does have some type of, <laughs> you know, backing in a sense. I didn't just pull some random game out of my butt. Like, look at this art. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Like, I seen this art and then I read a description. A gritty and immersive story brought to life with the latest technology. Introducing real-time tactical battle. A new, deeply strategic, real-time battle system. Crafted by a skilled and experienced experienced development team all these big freaking words definitely overkill but what i can tell you is this sparked a ton of ideas for digimon survive 2 but that's a separate video all right let's let me not get ahead of myself it did help me understand a few things in the context of Digimon Survive 1 as well. I was able to experience what a real challenge in a tactical rpg could be like you know what i'm saying it gave me clarity i also noticed just how much text digimon survive has bruh I can't get over this, man. What I mean is, right, the description for Deal for Chronicles, it's a deep and engaging story. And that immediately made me just think of Survive, right? Like, look at this tweet that I made. Follow me on Twitter. I don't know if, what you're doing if you if you don't. And it was as I started playing the game more, I realized, you know, this, this, this sort of thing. We'll come back to it in a second. The combat in Deal Field is honestly like this new type of real-time combat. But I feel like the big difference is just that the units auto-attack. 
you still have skills and whenever you use them you know time stops and then you got to move all of your units individually and things like that around the map it has that top-down aesthetic as well right so it's not too far off but it just gave me so many ideas and so many realizations in digimon survive you have those positional bonuses right if you do a side attack back attack and then if you're elevated you have a higher chance of crit they have their fair share of benefits but again the game ain't even really that hard so it's not it just kind of is what it is and when the kenzoku come through all beefed up with boosted stats and shit those positional attacks kind of just become normal damage and it becomes a trade-off you get behind the kenzoku do your little back attack do your little baby damage and then your turn ends and then the kenzoku gets behind you does their back attack big dick damage and now you're dead and that's the gameplay they'll run away and then all of a sudden randomly spawn so now it's a dark souls thing where it's like you're supposed to die because you obviously didn't prepare for for that but now you'll be able to prepare next time and coming back to that realization around you know surviving the amount of text it's a lot of fucking text i'm trying to tell y'all bro we could say the story of survive is engaging at some times but i don't think we could say it's deep. the overarching story is pretty straightforward a lot of the times it's just the characters talking back and forth in detail about what to do until they ultimately just come back to meet takuma while deal field chronicles is deep and engaging on all aspects. Deep in the sense that the story has a lot of bells and whistles and engaging with the way it mixes up the in-battle conversations with the narrative storytelling and animations to follow. And then similar to Digimon Survive, you have the ability to have side conversations with party members that actually benefits you in battle and gives additional story context. It's that changing of scenes that spices things up, you know? Like I can't fully bag though on Digimon Survive's back and forths because I feel like it's meant to represent and authentic human interactions by also taking into consideration like what's actually going on with these middle schools you know so i get it. and i will say deal field has some awkward conversations bro like the voice i don't know it's weird and i think part of it is like they're just saying such minimal things but so much like one sentence has like 20 details in it every word they speak is like important so it gets hard to follow sometimes you know so overall we just need some balance but bro imagine like after a big story event and survive we see some cool animation like the intro and then certain battles you know they have some animation cut scenes uh some you foldable level quality with the evolutions and shit like that versus just the still images bro come on that will be fine Chill out, bro you know what i'm saying we gotta make the digimon survive 2 video bro <laughs> You know what's crazy, bro? Like, I watch sub anime. I prefer it over dub. But something about playing a text heavy game, I was dying for some English voice acting. That would have made this game like plus 500 better. I don't know what the hell I mean by that. Put plus one on its score. Let's put it like that. I feel like this video is a lot. But this game is a lot. All in all, bro. This mid-sized title suffered from four years of development hell just to offer what feels like a decently put together mid-sized game that should have released four years ago. The stories were great. The delivery was a bit rough around the edges, but it still works. I love the dark and mature tone, but I'm going to need to have a conversation, a meeting or whatever with the combat designers. Now, listen, I don't got no ideas, but I think we could brainstorm. All I got to say, though, is, bro, I'm happy we're past this freaking era. Like it was getting out of hand how excited we were getting for a visual novel. Bro, listen, we was just clinging on to anything. You know what I'm saying? But I have no regrets. No regrets whatsoever, bro. I feel like leading up to this game was more... F nah, let me not. <laughs> let, me, let me not. Let me not finish that sentence, bro. It was fun, man. This was a fun time. I just... I just need some action, guys. Please. Please. <laughs> like, for real. They put more budget into the delivery. And we might have something on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. We might have something on their hands. On our hands. I'm like, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this shit at y'all. This is on the spot. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't playing this. I'm gonna get this shit a, a more freaking a 7.3 out of 10. Hey, you have it. Hey, you have it. Hey, I'm gonna be in the comments though. I, I, I feel like the videos be they ending so abrupt. Um, I'm gonna be in the comments. This is a discussion video. Hey, yo. Turn the shit off, bro. I'm not done. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you come.
coming back soon. It's the boy Jam, you the squad, it's the tune. Always feeling great, see me smiling in the room. I've been getting to the money ever since I left the woods. Hey, how you doing? What's the word? What's the move? We the J Squad, so please make room. I always hydrate and I'm eating on my plate. Thinking about the past, I can see this is my fate.